Scott Moonville. Over the next few moments, I'm going to share with you one of the keys to a longer, healthier, and happier life. It's the simple three-step process that I've used to help several of my hypnosis clients over the past decade. Don't worry, it has nothing to do with running on a treadmill, eating broccoli, or doing sit-ups. It's a simple three-step process that you can utilize to make your imagination your superpower. Army veteran and proud American, but folks, I believe the most powerful nation is our imagination. I believe that you can imagine your way to a better life. Imagine that. No, literally, imagine that. That everything you see in this physical world was created because of someone's imagination. In fact, we've been utilizing our imagination actively ever since we were children. Now, here's a question. Did any of y'all set out milk and cookies for Santa? That was our parents teaching us the subtle art of bribery, ladies and gentlemen. I remember being four years old, putting a tooth under my pillow, hoping for a quarter the next day. But that didn't always happen because I grew up with a single mother in Chicago and she would tell me the tooth fairy was afraid to carry cash in our neighborhood. <laughs> so for real, I literally would get a food stamp the next day. I ain't even playing. Even though sometimes I got an IOU from the tooth fairy, I still kept my active imagination. It's a very important faculty. However, we can misuse our imagination. And I'm not talking about the grown-ups out there that still believe in Santa. I'm referring to those of us who negatively predict future outcomes of current life situations that we may be involved in. Those of us who imagine the worst-case scenario playing out in our lives. That is the biggest cause of stress and anxiety. So, let's begin. The first step, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call D3. Do it different day. Simply pick one day out of the week and do three things differently. Three things that you normally do like on a routine basis. For instance, when you brush your teeth, use your opposite hand. When you shower, wash off and dry off your body in a different order. When you get dressed, put on your shirt before your pants. And if you're already doing that, see me after this talk because we've got some, di <laughs> we've got some discussions to do. <laughs> What's going to happen when you do this? You're going to utilize parts of your brain that haven't been used in a while, giving the overused ones a break, and you're going to be in the moment. Part two, P3, practice positive perspective. You're going to love this one. I want you to sit down and consider a person, place, or circumstance in your life. Something that you encounter often. Something that, man, always bugs you. Maybe it's traffic. Maybe it's your son or your daughter or one of your in-laws. Maybe it's that office jerk. I want you to sit down, imagine yourself in that actual environment, experiencing this person, place, or thing. And then take it a step further. Imagine yourself reacting positively. Imagine yourself reacting appropriately. And this is for the folks out there who've ever acted inappropriately. I know that I have. What's this going to do when you practice appropriate responses? Your body is going to produce dopamine and serotonin. That's our built-in reward system, ladies and gentlemen. And folks, if you've ever done something that's made you incredibly proud of yourself... You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because let's face it, that's something that we have to practice. Because you know what they say, practice makes, practice doesn't make perfect. You're perfect the way you are right now. Practice does make improvement. 
and when we position ourselves to experience more harmony in our lives, then the music changes. Here's one more, perhaps the most difficult, but the most rewarding. P-E-T, pet. Purposely expose yourself to that trigger. If you're at work, expose yourself to the office jerk. If traffic bothers you, find yourself in that traffic jam smiling and understanding that it's okay because you've done your practice. You practice your positive perspective. You're now engaging that perspective, and it's working for you. Because, ladies and gentlemen, let's face it. The world is the way that it is. We can't change anything about the world, but we can change ourselves. Now, you may be asking yourself, will this work for me? Well, it worked for the U.S. Olympic team. Every Olympic team that we've had since the mid-1980s has been utilizing this particular technique one way or the other. For example, they'll sit there and they'll imagine themselves, right, crossing the finish line in first place. And then, lo and behold, they end up and win that race. And all of us being part of the human race, we need to start crossing the finish line together. Now, Nelson Mandela said, one of the most difficult things to do in life is not to change society, but to change yourself. How can we do it? When I say D, you say three. D. Three. D. Three. When I say P, you say three. P. Three. P. Three. When I say P, E, you say T. P, E. P, E. How can we change the world? By changing ourselves first. D3, P3, PET, ladies and gentlemen, use your imagination as your superpower. Thank you.